It's time for Animazing Radio here on the Blog Talk Radio Network with your host, Doug Engler. Animazing Radio is brought to you tonight by Casey Creations. For all of your artwork, cosplay, and cosplay accessory needs, check out www.kaycikreations.weebly.com or search Casey Creations on Etsy. We're also brought to you tonight by HomeCircleMedia.com for the latest and greatest in anime gear, everything from pens, pencils, stationery, and officially licensed art books. Check out HomeCircleMedia.com today or look for them at an upcoming convention. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Animazing Radio here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. I am your host, Doug Engler, and we are so honored to start off the show with a good friend of ours to help us ring in our four-year anniversary. Please welcome talented voice actress Michaela Krantz to the show. Hi! Happy birthday! Thank you. It's uh, crazy to think that the show is four years old, and technically it was four years old on Friday, but um, this was the closest that we could get with last weekend uh, being off for Anime Boston. Oh, nice. How was Anime Boston? It was, uh, we had fun. Um, it's it's always different when you do conventions as vendors. Uh, Leanne was able to get a table with Casey Creation, so we were in Artist Alley for 29 hours out of the three days. Um, 12 oh hours gosh. Friday, 12 hours Saturday, and 5 hours on Sunday. So we didn't get to experience much of the convention outside of that. Um, I was able to get away from the table more than she was, and we were right. able to get down and uh, chat with Josh Greeley on Saturday. Um, also saw Brandon McInnes on Sunday. Um, got to talk to people from High Dive and Funimation and Sentai and Crunchyroll and all the big names were there. Um, awesome. And the the big the biggest uh, show that or the biggest cosplays that we saw a lot of ancient Megas Bride people going around Chisei's. Uh, uh, Chibi Elias, which was adorable. Um, uh, quite a few, quite a few soul leaders. Oh yeah, it, it was uh, a lot of fun to, you know, the cosplays were great. From what we saw inside Artist Alley, we only really saw who came through Artist Alley, and not so much. There were so many great cosplays that we've seen photos of that were like, why couldn't they have come by the table so we could have gotten photos <laughs> ourselves? But right. That's pretty awesome. I was, uh, where was, oh, I, um, there's this, you can do a deal for, um, going to get, like, x-rays for your teeth, uh, at, uh, uh, the community college over here for super cheap, and I'm super cheap, I'm a miser, so I was like, yeah, I'll pay 10 bucks and get some x-rays, um, and so the, the graduate student was messing with my teeth. And she was talking about how her friend just recently cosplays, cosplayed as Todoroki. And I was like, oh, my God, I played the young version of Todoroki. It was so weird. She was like, oh, I have to tell my friend. And she was all the while just busting with my teeth, which made it super awkward. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. But it was and... cool. To, like, you find them random places, different, you know, cosplayers and fans of it and everything. It's so funny. Oh, yeah, and, and it's, you know, when you think of cosplayers or you think of anime conventions, it's like, oh, they're just nerds, people, you know, the stereotypical people who, you know, don't heart, don't have good jobs or live in their parents' basement or things of that nature. But the amount of cosplays that you see, we have friends who are biologists. We had people that we talked to that were accountants and lawyers and really yeah, all. Yeah, right. They're oh, everywhere. Yeah. We're going to take over the world, man. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and I was looking through some of the newer roles that you've had since the last time that you were on with us. And uh, Card Captor Sakura, Clear Card, has come back. And um, you voice Caro in that. Caro! so much. I tell Kate with the director, I tell her every week that he's my weekly antidepressant because you go into the booth <laughs> and I just have a blast. It's like riding a roller coaster 
for that, you know, that week. I'm like riding on on a Caro high because <laughs> he's so ridiculous and I love him so much. Oh my god! <laughs> and there are so many times where I like I say it in some way, and like it's completely hysterical. But Caitlin's like, oh, we need to like rein in it a little bit, or oh, I think we need to just do it a different way so that it's more understandable. Or I don't know, I'll throw in like some stupid contemporary reference and she's like oh I think we need to make it more generic or whatever <laughs> but he's a trip. I love him so much I started I've watched like a couple episodes of the show I haven't really give, had a chance to give it much of a honest watch I usually give everything three episodes and I've only gotten two into card captor Sakura between, because of lack of time and watching a few mm. other shows at the moment but I will have sure. to look into it. From what I've seen, he he seems uh, quite the interesting character. He's so funny. He and and it's super awesome because it's just my voice. Because I I like I know this about myself is that I have the energy of a ten year old boy. Like I'm not. I can sound like a young lady, <laughs> but. My energy is such to where, like, I, I'm just a 10-year-old boy in in a young lady body, you know? So it comes out in the voice a lot. And Caro is great because he's just me. He's just me when I'm on a goofy day. On a goofy day, that's Caro. And so he's super easy to do. Like, he's super easy to do. He's just he's me, which is awesome. Um, and, and I have another character that... Um, Mike cast me in Tokyo Ghoul season three, and I play uh, another character that's like boy. You know, she's they, they, he, they, whatever he. He's played by a girl, uh, so he sounds kind of like a girl, but he's very boyish, and he's got you know short, dark green hair, and he's kind of very. He kind of reminds me of Ryu, actually. He's very Ryu-esque, but, like, those types of characters, that, like, boy energy, I am all about it. Super easy. It's another character that's just, like, basically me, which is awesome. It's got to be a lot of fun when you can get into the booth and just, you know, let yourself go, Be not, not worry about having to hold back on things and just having fun with it. Absolutely. For sure. Because you're not, you're not, because, I mean, Rosia was awesome, and, like, Yayoi from Shino, uh, from, uh, what was the word, what was it, uh, Hina Logic, those, those characters are super fun, but I get stuck in my head too much with those characters, because I need to, like, I'm constantly trying to make sure that I'm in that vocal range, you know, so I get, I get too in my head, and I get too, like, technical with them. But with characters like Caro, I can just, you know, let my freak flag fly, as it were. Oh, yeah. And then you have the roles like Hyoka from Shimonetta, the world where dirty jokes don't exist. (laughs) I know we had uh, fun with that up in Vermont. Josh was directing me because Mike was out of town for a while at some other convention. And so he was directing me in the Tokyo Ghoul character. And he was like, what is it with you and getting cast as the, like, quiet, weird person with green hair? And I'm like, I don't know. And that's just that's just who they see me as, the green-haired weirdo. <laughs> that's what I'm being typecast as. Yeah, but not all your characters are green hair and weirdos. I mean, you you have, uh, you know, the the character that introduced me to you with Elena Arshavina with the white hair and the Russian assassin. That's very, that's very true. My first character was actually green haired, but then you're right. The Russian was white haired. King's Game, there was a white haired girl that I did. It's either green hair or white hair. Tell me something. Doll was white hair as well. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then you have a lot of blondes that you played, including uh, Susan A. and uh, Rika and Showman Sample, and also um, going to be the twin tail. I got my first, like, fan letter from 
they sent it to Funimation. So it was like my first like fan letter that was sent to Funimation. And they were saying that Susan A was their favorite character. And I was like, uh, it just made my day. I was so shout out to Josh wherever you are. <laughs> you made my day. That's awesome. And yeah. you've been a you've been a part of the show, uh, been a guest on the show multiple times, and um, you know we always love being able to chat with you and have fun talking and catching up. And uh, to think that this whole, whole little thing for us started four years ago, with basically uh, probably four and a half years ago, but the first episode was four years ago on a, mm-hmm. the old network of Hazy Radio, and. Um, it's amazing when I sit back and because I went back through the notebook I have of all the guests since I started over here on Blog Talk back in February of uh, 2016, I think it was, and mm-hmm. the amount of guests that I've had is just mind blowing. Um, just uh, just in the notebook, and you know, I thank you wholeheartedly for being a friend of ours and a friend of the shows and have wanted to come and join us tonight because, like I said, it's always fun to connect with you and chat and see what you've been up to. Oh, I think you guys are awesome. You guys are a hoot, a hoot and a half to join. So <laughs> I, I could be more thrilled to be here. You guys are fantastic. And that's great. That's so cool that you've gotten so many, like in just four years, you know, you've interviewed so many different people from Funimation, at least that I know, you know, and I'm sure more. That's oh, awesome. yeah. we've that's like the whole between Funimation and that's amazing. Oh yeah, and and you know, fun, through, from Funimation, Sentai Filmworks, of course, I don't want to leave <laughs> out the cosplayers and the artists and the vendors and the gamers and musicians and everybody that we've had on the show as well. Um, and of course, our friend Geek Out with Pebbles, Darcy, is listening in in the chat room. Hello to Darcy for all <laughs> our friends out there. Check out her show, Geek Out with Pebbles, on Monday nights here on Blog Talk Radio. I will have to do that. Darcy uh, joined us for three shows as co-host when she was trying to start a podcast, or, um, start the Geek Out with Pebble. She was trying to find a home for that. And uh, so last year we had her on the show, and so she got to chat with – I got to look back through the paper – through the notes here. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how many pages back was she? Uh, she got to talk with uh, Terry Doty. Jim Taylor oh, wow. and Jay Morris. Nice. Oh my gosh. I okay, I'm 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 a massive book reader and I'm so I cannot wait to read Terry's uh book that she that she wrote. Um what is it called? It's like One of a, Few. One of one of few, what is it? Yep. Yeah, yeah we yeah, uh yeah. We were honored that she reached out to us to uh, be one of the early ebook readers of her book and, uh, you know, do a review of it on a few different sites. And then we had Terry on the show to talk about the book. Uh, mm-hmm. And it, I'm not much of a reader. And for, you know, for me to actually sit down and read a book cover to cover, it really has to draw me in. And I, uh-huh. I'm a slow reader. I'm a slow reader just because I don't take a lot of time, and my biggest issue is I fall asleep when I'm reading, which is why it takes me so long to read a book. I finished her book four hours before we had her on the show, so it was all fresh (laughs) in my mind, and the book was fantastic. It really was a great book, and I would recommend one of you to anybody. I'm so excited. I think that's awesome. I read I read constantly. I am at the library all the time. Not really, but almost. <laughs> like You'd all like the, to be at the library all the time. <laughs> now what right now, now if you a non fiction pick though. Say again? No I was gonna say with uh you know, knowing a lot of the characters that you've done in the past and I saw a, a post on the uh, Michaela Krantz, Krista's uh, Facebook page that somebody posted your character, and I forget her name from Brave Witches, and I apologize. Kano! Uh, Kano, that's right. And I, I, I laughed because when I told you that I didn't know you played that character, you had a hard time believing that because you felt that was the most 
recognizable to your voice, and I was like, I just don't <laughs> hear it. I went back and listened again, and it's like, I can't believe that's Michaela, because knowing you outside of the booth and being able to, you know, have the honor of hanging out with you at after parties for Vermont Comic Con <laughs> and Chase Con, um, I just, it was like, I just don't hear it. I, uh, Is it so, so smiling? He's so angry all the time. <laughs> It could it could be that you're playing a character that's just always like pissed off, but she knows how to motivate. She just wants to hit everything. But, and but she, so, I always, she's she's sort of there is a little bit of uh, her in Caro as well. So I'm I'm I guess. Listen to Carol a little bit, and I bet you'll hear a little Kano in there. I'll have I'll have to do that. I'll have to sit down and uh, go back through and listen to it again. And uh, yeah, it's amazing because uh, I'm trying to remember back when we first had you on the show. I'm trying to think how back how far back it was. Was it in 2015 or 2016 the first time we had you on the show? Oh my gosh, because um, it's 2018 now, so I think it was 2016. Because I know World Break, I know World Break came out in 2015. So I'm oh, trying to. Oh, maybe it was 15. <gasps> that feels like so long 10? ago. Because I I was talking with somebody the other day about um you know, having the honor. I think it was at MA Boston talking to people about the show and that it's been an honor to have so many. Um, young up and coming voice actors to be a part of Animazing Radio, and you were yeah. among the names that I listed because I think when we had you on the first time, you only had a couple of small roles on One Piece and Fairy Tale, World Break, and right. I don't even know if you had been announced for High School DXD Born yet. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And, it's, but I, it's the, insane. That was only like three years ago, and I'm I, like I keep a list of all the characters that I've that I've done, and I'm up to like I'm in my I'm in my seventies. That's up amazing. To characters to play. Right? Isn't that nuts? That, and so and it's been amazing to you know be friends because I I'm looking back uh, when we switched over to Blog Talk the first time we had you on was actually mm-hmm. almost two years ago, April 10th. It was the first time you joined us on this network. Oh, Molly. So it's ama- So I'm, I'm like so happy I have these records. I can go back and look and see, oh, we had Michaela on on this one. And, uh, right. I, you, we've, we've had you on as a co-host for uh, Jade Saxton, I think, July of 2016 as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, Jade. Uh, we we were lucky enough happened. to get to meet Jade last year. Oh, not, where? Uh, Connecticut. Down in Hartford, cool. Connecticut. I miss the great north. I know, we got to get you back up here again. For sure. I mean, I'm hoping that Jason will contact me for Vermont, but I would love to go anywhere else up there. Just the northeast is so freaking gorgeous. Oh yeah, and, and I know. Uh, yeah, I can talk. Honest, it's been a long day. The e, our daughter EB had a weird night sleeping last night. Was up like three or four times, so my sleep schedule was all sorts of wank, uh, whacked out. Oh, I cannot imagine having a child. I can't. I can't do it. You but, guys are. You guys are troopers. If if you can make it, if. Uh, you are invited up to Vermont Comic Con. You will get a chance to meet Evie because we're going to have her with us. Oh my gosh! Yay! That's awesome. Recently, and, uh, I'm just surrounded by babies. A lot of my friends are having babies right now, so I'm just I'm covered in babies. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, we were talking a little bit about cosplaying as well. Uh, you know, we've been gracious enough to have so many talented cosplayers on the show in the past. Um, what are some of the cosplays that you've enjoyed? People? Or, like, the characters uh, that I see? 
the the, was, the characters that you've was, seen. There was a girl who did she, um, Shir, Shiryuki from uh, a girl with the red hair, the Snow White with the red hair. Yep. There was a girl who dressed like her, and like that costume was fantastic. Um, there was somebody who uh, dressed up as Seal from Black Butler, and they were decked to the nines. Uh, what else? What else? What else have I seen? I have to ask: When you saw the Sharyuki cosplayer, did you bust into Ryuku, or Ryu's voice? You, of course I did, dude. I gave her a big hug, and we took a picture together, and I have it somewhere on my phone. Oh, my gosh. I was just so – because I didn't I didn't know – like, I, I, would, I wasn't expecting it at all because that, that show I didn't feel like, I don't know, was, like, super well-known. So the fact that somebody was so much of a fan that she cosplayed was – I was just, like, totally honored. <laughs> Demeter, that was so cool. Oh yeah, but, uh, we saw. I'm trying to think, tons where of was the? I think we saw a Shariuki cosplayer at ChaseCon actually when we were the one year that we were out there. Actually, you were there with us at the same convention. What? I don't remember her. I'll have Did to look back through the. I'm by the table though. Right. I, I, I know told her that you. I told her that you were there. I know there was one at sure. Vermont. I don't remember meeting two though. I'll I just have to remember look back one. through my pictures. But if I met her and I just don't remember, I'm gonna feel really bad. Because <laughs> we, we uh, and actually, Leanne gets the credit for pointing her out. She's like, "Yeah, you just missed Shariuki. She's walking down that way." And so I chased after her to get a picture. And then I told her that you were there. The voice of Ryu was at the convention. So she got excited and said she was going to head over. I don't know if she ever made it that way because at conventions, it's easy to get sidetracked with friends or vendors or things of that nature. But uh, That's very true. And I don't know. Maybe I was too tucked away. And because uh, I left the table on Saturday at Anime Boston to go to the dealer's room. It was going to be like a quick walk around, look for a couple of things. I came back three hours later. (laughs) Maybe it was that Chase that I'm thinking of. I thought it was that Vermont Comic-Con, but maybe it was Chase that I'm thinking. I know that there was only one that I met, though, so maybe it was her. That's possible. I'm getting my conventions confused. Well, that's what happens when you start becoming such a big name. My brain is going senile. (laughs) My brain's already been senile, trying to keep things straight. (laughs) Uh, But we we want to throw happy birthdays out there. I know there's a few birthdays that have uh, come up this week, um, including my birthday was on Wednesday. We want to throw a happy birthday. Oh, thank you. We want to throw a happy birthday out to uh, Jason Moulton's fiance Natasha, whose birthday is today. <laughs> and uh, trying try to look through to see who else has days that are show-related. Um, coming up this week, Amber Lee Connors has a birthday. Happy uh, birthday, Tara Saint Michael. <laughs> Tara oh. Saint Michael has a birthday. Uh, happy birthday. I know she. Uh, I think that is it for um, the upcoming ones that are would be people who would be on the show later on in April. I'm looking through Billy West, talented voice Happy actor. Uh, I have so many friends on Facebook, so I cheat and go through here to see who on here has birthdays that are upcoming oh, I, in the month of I April. I do not get on Facebook much anymore at all. Like, I, it just totally, con- it was just so all-consuming that, like, several months ago, I just, I just stopped getting on there as often and started reading more, actually. I've been reading more books than getting on Facebook. I just can't, I can't do it for very long at all. 
Yeah, it does. It does just bring, draw you right in. Also, happy birthday uh, in the month of April to our friend uh, Taylor, who I call her my I call her our little Chiho, who works for McDonald's and is a huge anime fan. And coming up towards the end of the month, also Morgan Berry. And Morgan oh, yeah. Berry has a birthday. Happy birthday, Morgan! Also, my mom uh, next week. So happy birthday, mom, Michaela's mom. <laughs> Happy birthday to Michaela's mom as well. And we have, I just looked at the clock. We've got to go to our bottom of, bottom of the hour break. But when we come back, we're going to have Megan Shipman joining us as well. It's going to be a lot of fun and craziness at some point tonight Tonight as well. Anthony Bowling is supposed to be joining us. And in the last half hour of the show, we're going to open the phone lines to any past guest who has been a part of the show for the last four years. And we're going to open up the phone lines, let you guys all come in and hang out for the last 30 minutes. So stay tuned for more craziness of Animazing Radio here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. Hello, I'm Chise from the Ancient Magus' Bride. And you're listening to Animazing Radio on the Blog Talk Radio Network. And welcome back to Animazing Radio here on the Block Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Doug Engler. Joining us in the co-host seat tonight is very talented voice actress, Michaela Krantz. Hello. And we are so happy to have another one of our great friends, voice acting talent from Funimation, sitting in the guest chair tonight and hanging out with us for our four-year anniversary show. Please welcome Megan Shipman to the show. Hello, hello. Otherwise known as 18 Mop Top, we just played one of her new songs, uh, Azalea, during the commercial break. We're going to have another one of her new songs debuting uh, probably at the top of the hour break, um, which I absolutely fell in love with uh, from MMO Junkie. It's called Saturday Night Question. Um, mm-hmm. welcome, to, welcome to the show, Megan. I'm so happy that you were able to join us as well. I know. I, it's, good. it's been a while. It's good to, good to be back. And uh, we were talking a little bit um, off the air about that you and Michaela have probably met in passing but never really took the time to uh, chat with each other. And uh, I wanted to let Michaela ask a few questions if she had any for you um, right off the bat here. Oh, gosh. Put me on the spot there. Um, (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know. Like, I I don't know when I even – started seeing your name pop up so like how well, I guess how long have you been with Foundation I guess well I'm coming up on like what five I want to say five years but this summer okay, will be like cool. five years yeah so it's it's been it's been a hot minute <laughs> I've been up there right, a little yeah. bit I've been up there I've been up there a lot more recently mainly because you know I used to be a teacher that was my my daytime job, my secret identity, and uh-huh. uh, I I just kind of you know how life works. You know I wasn't happy with where I was, uh, and so I I quit that job and I tried to find another teaching job, but it didn't really work out because I'm a music teacher and music jobs are really hard to come by, even more so than regular teaching jobs. Uh, yeah. So I was like, well, so I was like, well, if I don't uh, if I don't get a teaching job, it's fine. Uh, I will do, and at that point, I'd ha- I just got put in in new game with Cliff, and um, oh yeah, I was like, well, I was like, well, I'll have I'll have a little bit of steady work for a little bit, and I so I kind of had that luxury of knowing, you know, new game had two seasons, and it was like that, it was just so weird, and then I was like, well, I'll I'll do this, and I'll see how, you know, having more time for voice acting will go. And then I also decided to do like substitute teaching, so I can kind of like make my own schedule and you know oh, sub nice. when I need to and all that kind of stuff. And it's it's been great. So I've been up there more the last year just because I've had a more open schedule and it's it's been it's nice. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I feel like maybe we just like have been on you know different schedules, different days, and all this stuff, you know, and we just haven't really mm-hmm. had a to schedule us whenever, and we just go what we're told. <laughs> Yeah, but and, like you, and it's like you and Jake, go for it. No, you go, you go, you go. <laughs> I was just curious, like what you thought of the the fact that like most shows are now um, simulcast, so that it's like mm. it's it's 
it seems like maybe that fits more with what you're thinking is like, you, you know, now we have like a steady stream of like, I know at least once a week I'll be called in for the yeah. next episode. Or, yeah. And see, it was, it was really so interesting because you were yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it, it helps because you're like, well, it's not all, I mean, simul, simul dubbing has its, has its pros and its cons, like everything. And, and one, it's really stressful, but <laughs> you know, like, like it's, it's nice that the work is also spread out so that, you know, like, okay, if I'm, you know, this character, I know I'll probably be called in maybe once or twice a week, depending on what I get. And then sometimes, sometimes, you know, and sometimes, you know, it just happens where you're not in anything and that's just, you know, luck of the draw, I guess. I don't know. Uh, and it happens and, but I don't know. I, I, I like, I like simul dubbing just cause it kind of spreads out, you know, it spreads out like it gives you, okay, for the next, 12 weeks I know that I'll have some 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 money coming in and it'll be nice and I don't have to stress out about my life <laughs> yeah no yeah for sure I get that mm-hmm. and that's got to be one of the biggest misconceptions a lot of people think voice actors make tons of money but you guys really only get paid for your time in the booth of recording it's not um, if you don't have a steady role or something that's going to be lasting for a while <laughs> then you have a lot of voice actors do have second jobs or second source of income coming in. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like definitely, we don't get royalties definitely. on the show or anything like that. No. Mm-mm. Get paid for when we do it and then that's it. <laughs> yep. And Pretty I was, much. I was looking back through some of the shows that both of you are in together and uh, it was. It's funny when I look back, and Shimonetta is one that you're both in. Megan is young Tanikachi, and uh, Michaela, of course, is Hyoka. Um, other shows include uh, Masume Kun's Revenge. Uh, trying to see what a, a show by Rock both of you were a part of, and that's a tremendous anime. I love Show by Rock. Who are you in that's Show by Rock? One. I was Corriente. I was like the little girl with um. I think Michelle played the the Little Mermaid girl, and we like sold the water bottles. We're like, buy our water. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then in the second season, I think she had like my character had like a race with uh, Morgan Berry's character, like a swimming race. And my girl is like, her whole outfit is a swimsuit, and then she loses the swimming race. I was like, this is rigged. <laughs> this is rigged. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious see that's the thing that's the thing is like I could be in a show with you and have no idea because maybe our characters never even said anything to each other yeah or or that's- there's like so many characters that you're like there's just so many people in the show <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> it's it's weird trying to be friends with like your voice actor friends because sometimes yeah, you just don't re- see <laughs> For weeks. <laughs> you you really have to make a, a big effort to like hang out with your voice actor friends because it's yeah. like <laughs> you'll never see each other at work. <laughs> right, exactly. Another show that the two of you both appear in, and I remember Michaela's character, but I don't remember yours, Megan, and I feel bad because I've watched Showman Sample. Um, but Michaela oh, was, I was Rico. Like, I was a teacher. Sure. I remember. Wait, yeah, were, I remember. I was a teacher because I remember. Um, I remember I was like having a a parent student conference, and and Caitlin was like, "You're a teacher. This is perfect for you." <laughs> and I was like, "Well, great." <laughs> and it was like this. Uh, there was just this like parent teacher conference, and I was like, and she was like, "Yeah, they're having some moment together, but you have no idea what's going on. You're just being a teacher." And I was like, "Okay, great." <laughs> Wait, so wait, you weren't you weren't uh, my character's mom. You were a teacher. Yeah, no, I was a teacher, and I think Me the whole. I, Yeah, and so I I remember I had like I don't know I had like the I I can't I honestly cannot remember what characters are what names. So <laughs> I'm the worst. I know at that. Oh. Ditto. I, there's nothing to associate it to. Like it's just a word. <laughs> yep. 
That's my why dog I has think gone, uh, my dog has gone under the bed with his own bed. Uh, so <laughs> he's, he's, it's one of those nights with my dog. <laughs> I'm like Aww. wrestling my dog with my foot, and <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm scatterbrained tonight. My dog is crazy. Oh no worries. <laughs> He's a and, puppy. And it's neat to listen to you guys chat, knowing that you know there are certain shows you've been in, but you know may have seen the names and the credits, but haven't really gotten to talk. So I'm actually just enjoying sitting back, listening to you two compare notes. Uh, another show that you both were in together is Snow White with the Red Hair. Oh my! Oh God. yeah, yeah. I played the I played the little brother of uh, what's his name of the oh, that one Todd prince character. that's like yeah, that's like marry was... me, and she's like yeah, no thanks. <laughs> oh my God, we were yeah. both boys. Yay! Yay. Love being little boys, yay! And and it was just like he was like, yeah, I'm, who was it? It was Chris George that did that show. I can't remember. I always have to like slowly think yeah. and remember. Yeah, but yeah, it was, Chris. It was that was that was really fun playing a little a little bratty kid. <laughs> they're they're the best. <laughs> they're the best. They're always the best. They get to pout and complain about everything. <laughs> Right? It's so fun. And then yeah. uh, Michaela was Ryu, and we had we had the honor of uh, hanging out with Michaela at uh, ChaseCon a couple years ago, right after Snow White with the Red Hair had come out, and it, it was just really fun chatting with her about the character and getting to find out some insights about how she, you know, brought Ryu to life uh, in her own way and. I had her tell Leanne something, which we can't say on the air, but it w- we still laugh about that because she wasn't expecting it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we made Ryu have a mouth of a sailor for a little bit there, <laughs> which was super I was fun. Taking a, I was laughing. I was taking a drink of a soda, and I was like, ha, <laughs> and I couldn't laugh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those are always the most fun. Yeah, I Thinking of like talking like a sailor, I remember we left so many great um, in citrus that just happened. We left a lot of great bombs for everyone. Um, yeah. Because like, yes. there's so many times like characters get real close to each other's faces, and so we'd be like, "You're breathy." <laughs> <laughs> and I, they were yes. so funny. Or like there, I, another one that I love is like there's one time like my character's like hiding under the covers of a bed with this other character and this uh-huh. other character's like pretending to sleep and then I like poke my head up from under the covers and I remember we put there um we put the line uh like did you fart we are so childish when we get in the booth man yeah. like yes really. and- Yes, and, and Citrus was with Kristen, and I'm like, I've already been friends with Kristen for a while, and so it, recording was just super goofy time because we were just super goofy together. <laughs> yes, that's awesome. Mhm. Yeah, there are certain characters in certain shows that lend itself to just bombing the f out of your fellow mm-hmm. actors. Oh yes, 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 yes. I wish that I could hear some of the bombs that are left behind on some of these shows because I can just imagine what, you know, getting to know you guys as well as we've known, you know, we've been friends with uh, Michaela for about three years and I think with you, Megan, about four, almost four years now. Mm-hmm. Um, blows my mind because that means that you were on with us shortly after we first started. Radio. Yeah, probably like a, a a year, maybe not even a year after y'all started. And, and you know, so we've been able um, to to chat for a long time. We've all become friends. Um, uh, I've had the honor of being able to meet Michaela in person. We're still trying to get Megan up here to the Northeast so that we can get a chance to meet her since Megan One and I share. <laughs> yeah, a, a fun little fact, Michaela. Megan and I uh, both share the same wedding anniversary, day, month, and year. <laughs> we do. Uh, day, month, yeah. and year? Yeah, it was yep. really funny. I forgot how it came up, but you asked me to do something, and I was like, oh, I can't. I have my anniversary, or I'm getting married that day or something. And you were like, oh, I am too. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
Oh, well, no, I, I, had, I had invited you to come up to the wedding. I, I had put an invite oh, out to you to come to the wedding, and you're like, I can't. I'm getting married that weekend. I was like, really? Which day? And you're like, Saturday. I'm like, so are we. Yay. <laughs> that is a trip. Mm-hmm. So me, June, the month of then, love. And, and then and, and then Anthony Bowling got married on Leanne's birthday. Oh, that's Jesus. cute. <laughs> so and okay. a big congratulations to Anthony. I hope he calls in. I'm gonna I'm gonna get married in like November. That's a good plan. I don't think anybody gets married in November. Nope. Yeah, get married in November. It's always in the spring and summer. Right. Do it November. So the hot month. Why? What's if November sixth? That's Evie's birthday. Oh, oh my god. Evie's so cute. Oh <laughs> Ridiculous. <laughs> Evie Evie is so cute. I see pictures of Evie on Facebook and she's like the cutest baby I've ever seen. <laughs> she's so adorable. Thank you. Yeah, we I know Leanne likes posting a lot of Evie pictures. I think I took probably 60 pictures of her while she was eating applesauce tonight for the first time. So <laughs> That's adorable. Uh, too funny. So I'll, I'll probably put those up on Facebook later. So you might need to come and check out Facebook for a little bit. Right, yeah. <laughs> for Evie. I'll do it, do it for the, Evie. Do it after the show so that you are listening to the show the whole time. <laughs> right. Oh, goodness. <laughs> And I want to thank everybody out there tuning in tonight, including Geek Out with Pebbles, who's hanging out in the chat room with us. Um, I like that name, uh, Geek Out with Pebbles. That you can hear that Monday nights from seven to eight here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. So they air tomorrow. So if you're out there listening, be sure to check them out. They have a great podcast that they do as well. Um, I messed up the time when they were going to have me on, so I joined in like the last 15 minutes of our show a few weeks ago, but hopefully I'll be able to join them for a full show in the not t- not too distant future, and uh, we had Darcy on the show not that long ago, um, and it's always fun chatting with her, and we got to meet her in person for the first time last weekend at Anime Boston, and that was a crazy weekend. Thank you to everybody who came by the table at the KC Creations table in Artist Alley. Thank you to those who chatted, let us see your cosplays, and Thank you to those who purchased stuff from the table. Um, we didn't sell the big painting we were hoping to have go in the charity uh, – uh, not charity auction, in the art show. Um, it was a huge 30 by 40 canvas painting of Kirara, uh, reflection Kirara. Oh, oh, yeah, I remember you posting about that. That one was really pretty. Hmm. And uh, that came home with us. So anybody out there who's interested, it is still for sale contact Casey Creations for information about that, either through Facebook or Instagram. Anyways, you can find uh, them. They'd be happy to chat with you about the painting or any of the commissions or any of the prints that they have. Um, I was talking with Michaela in the first segment of the show about some of the popular shows, um, cosplays that we saw. We saw a lot of um, Megas Bride uh, probably got pictures of four different Chiseis, three different uh, Eliases, a lot of Soul Leader cosplay. Not one show actually like stood out where in years past it was either Love Live, everybody was doing that, or Attack on Titan, or, you know, mm-hmm. it, it seemed like for every year there was a different anime who just took over the cosplay world at conventions. And Anime Boston, there's not really one that stood out to us. We saw a lot of fantastic cosplay. Uh, uh, so many different, including um, what was Vic's character's name in Show by Rock? Was it Shusno? Vic, uh, uh, well, uh, what was his name? Oh God, See, again, I can't remember. In one ear, out the other, man. It's so hard to remember. I know how to find it. Really just, cool dudes. Now it's a big blonde I'm hair. The, I like, am the worst at remembering names. I'm yeah. so bad at it. I am trying to pull up the cast from Show by Rock right now, but the internet's being slow. <laughs> Probably because I have too many windows open, but you know it happens. <laughs> so 
Let's see if we can get this going. There we go. And uh, not Crow, although she also voices Crow. Um, yeah, it was it was Shuzo. So we saw saw somebody pl uh, cosplaying as Shuzo from Show by Rock. He was the uh, blonde hair from like the first band that shows up. Yeah. It was, oh, yes, uh, yes, Shin yes. Gun, Shin Gun Crimson's rivals. That's yes. Right. And the girl also cosplays Crow from Shin Gun Crimson, but she didn't have that cosplay with her at the time. Um, oh. And it's the first time I've seen a Shuzo cosplayer ever, so I had to chase her down, and she was about four tables down by the time I got out from behind our booth. And, like, literally chasing him down, going, hey, can I get a phone? <laughs> I felt like an idiot chasing <laughs> this poor person down, but it was hey, worth I've it. Hey, I've done that. Sometimes you see, like, really cool costumes that you're like, oh, my God, I w I've never seen this. Or they just look really cool. I've totally, like, had to, you know, I see someone from afar at a convention, and I, like, will run across the hall and be like, wait, please. <laughs> I just want a picture. I'm sure I've it totally, totally makes that. it. I have been that person. <laughs> and, um. There was a few uh, different uh, show by rock, or not show by rock, uh, yeah, Love Live cosplayers that had gone by, Love Live Sunshine. There was quite a few people dressed up from that as well. Leanne, who only watched a couple of episodes of Love Live, Love Live Sunshine, but loved the original, she um, was like, oh, that looks like a Yoshino cosplayer. I think that's a Yoshino cosplayer. So there were quite a few of those. Uh, saw a lot of Nico cosplayers, which thankfully There's for us, who... Nico. <laughs> Nico's one of those characters that's so cute it's annoying. Yeah, <laughs> you, a lot of people either you love her or you hate her, man. She's she's so cute. She she gets you, man. <laughs> and she'd probably be more adorable if she didn't do the Nico Nico knee spiel like she does. And um, oh, but that she has to do that. <laughs> oh yeah. And we told this story before our break. We had a, a good friend of ours, Karen Goslin, who's a talented artist and one of my wife's art mentors. Um, she, Karen got to sit with Leanne at AAC up in Manchester, New Hampshire, as a Nico cosplayer stopped in front of their table and did her whole Nico Nico spiel. Karen had oh never my. seen Love Live, had never heard of it, had no idea who this character was but wanted to, like, pull her hair out by the time this young lady walked away from the table, <laughs> oh, which I then said she did it right. <laughs> she did it right. Oh, my gosh. That's Appropriate funny. response. I <laughs> but I want to thank uh, everybody who has stuck by us here for the last four years. It has been an amazing yeah. ride. We still got another hour to go. We've got to go to our bottom or top of the hour break because time flies so quick. Uh, Michaela, I know that you said you were only able really to stay around for the first hour. I don't know if you have extra time yeah. that you can stick around or if you've got a jet, but I want to give you a few moments to uh, shame, shamelessly plug yourself. Any shows that you have coming up, any convention appearances, uh, anywhere people can find you, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, I do have to jet jet, but, um, I'm on Twitter at Michaela Jo Krantz, um, I'm my full name, and, um, on Facebook, Michaela Jo Krantz, uh, Instagram, Michaela Jo Krantz, and then, uh, hopefully, if Jason gets back to me, I'll be at Vermont Comic Con again in mid-August, and then, uh, Monica and I are gonna be down in San Japan, that's down in San Antonio, end of August. It's like the last weekend of August uh, to like September 2nd or something. So we'll be down there mainly for, you know, card capture. But just come come to San Antonio and hang out with me because uh, I haven't been to San Antonio in a really long time. And you guys can uh, tell me what to see. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. I'm, I'm you know, if you're in the DFW area, uh Usually I'll be in some sort of live theater show, but um, I'll usually announce that on, like, Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. 
Awesome. We want to thank you so much for joining us on our four-year anniversary special. Um, it's always a pleasure to chat with you. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out if you have news coming up that you want to announce. We're all, always happy to have you come and hang out with us, whether it's guest co-host or any of the like. Um, we've got to go to our top of the hour break, but we thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Doug. And thanks. Uh, it was good meeting you, Megan. <laughs> I know, you too. (laughs) We'll be back with more Amazing Radio right after these messages. Hi, this is 13 from My Hero Academia, and you're listening to Amazing Radio on the Blog Talk Radio Network. And welcome back to Amazing Radio here on the Blog Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Doug Engler. Joining us in the guest seat tonight, we want to welcome back Megan Shipman, talented voice actress. Hello, hello. Michaela had to leave, but we thank her for the hour she was able to hang with us for the first half of the show. And it was fun getting to listen to you and Michaela chat um, because it felt like unofficially it's the first time that you really had a chance to meet each other and talk um, other than quick in passing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It was was nice because sometimes you just don't – you don't really get to like introduce yourself to people or have a conversation because you just are running to work and, <laughs> and then going home. And I just realized this is our four-year anniversary show, and there's one particular song I have not played yet, so I'm going to take about a minute here and play that now because we do it every year during this show. Yay. Oh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. For a cheerful toast and fill it, happy anniversary. But be careful you don't spill it, happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary to An Amazing Radio. This is Brittany Karbowski. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. Hi, this is Maria Leone, and I just want to say happy anniversary, and Amazing Radio. And happy, they're both as happy as can be, celebrating merrily their happy anniversary. Hi, this is Kristen McGuire, and I just want to wish happy anniversary to an Amazing Radio. Oh. Happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary. We not say emphatically, it's happy anniversary. Not another day could be a happy anniversary. Oh, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy anniversary, happy, 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 I can't believe I had forgotten to play that. But we <laughs> want to thank everybody. That was put together for us as a surprise from one of our past producers back in the hazy radio days. So a big thank you to um, Brittany Karbowski, uh, Maria Leon, and um, Christy McGuire for doing that for us with the uh, old producer. And uh, we had a lot of fun with everybody back in those days. And to think it's four years since – we started the show way back when, and Tia Ballard was our first ever guest. So you you have to live up to the high to the high hopes when you are able to get um, a, a well known name from the voice acting world like Tia. And uh, so we were very thankful back then. Me being a greenhorn with when it came to you know anime talk radio, I was experienced with paranormal and other types of pop culture talk radio thanks to um, LiveParanormal.com that I had a show on and was a guest on other shows talking about ghosts and ghost hunting and things of that nature back then and then with Crossing the Void Radio and as you know the time has progressed we've jumped from Hazy Radio over to Blog Talk and uh, been continuing to grow and of course a big thank you to you, Megan, for joining us tonight and also allowing us to play a couple of new songs that you had out. Uh, you have a Patreon, um, which we just recently started after seeing a few other voice actors, including yourself, uh, do because we, we want to try to be able to provide better content on the show, get better equipment, maybe a headset that doesn't want to wig out every now and then, so I have <laughs> to use my cell phone to do the show tonight. Uh and um, 
you know, I thank you for allowing us as the songs come out to give them a home here on the show and play them occasionally throughout the uh, shows as we progress through. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I enjoy them and, and I enjoy that you enjoy them. So <laughs> they're, I, I love it. And uh, I, I, I know I'd mentioned to you in the uh, Facebook comments um, on Facebook messenger but my wife has been following you, and you, you knew about this from the first time you were on the show, that she was a fan of yours before we knew who you were, um, from the first time you joined us. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's 18 Mop Top. And she was like, wait, I know who that is. I've been listening to her stuff for a long time. And mm-hmm. uh, she has said that as the songs have gone, like she loves your citrus cover, said that that's one of the best things that you've put out. I think uh, – the MMO Junkie one, which we just played during that commercial break, Saturday Night Question, is amongst the best, among the best that you have put out. Good God, I can talk on her. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I, you know, I I really appreciate it because you know, there's God, I've I've neglected my channel for just so so long, and um, you know, I've always wanted to do do more with it, and. Uh, I just, I finally just decided I was like, cause I, I mean, back when I was uh, doing teaching, I mean, all my time and energy went into just work every day. And so my channel kind of like fell by the wayside, even though that was something I really enjoyed doing. And it was a really nice creative outlet for me. I mean, and just like, I'm sure this radio show is a really good creative outlet for you guys. And, you know, I, I lost doing that and then finally you know I just told myself at the beginning of this year I was like I want to do something that I enjoy again and so I was like I want to go like I told myself I want to go like all into this uh and so I I got a lot of help from Amanda uh Amanda Lee on on YouTube she also does I mean she's phenomenal with doing uh YouTube covers and uh we it's it's really nice because I got to know her we were both at a at a convention together, and then we found out that we we have the exact same birthday, uh, day, month, and year, <laughs> and so we immediately bonded over that fact, uh, as as you do. And then uh, so and then she moved to Dallas, and she's been here, and now she's doing stuff at Funimation, which I'm so happy for her because she's doing really well. And she helped me and gave me a ton of advice on how to like set up my YouTube and like how to set up Patreon and. Uh, all that kind of stuff, and she's just been, like, super sweet and amazing and helping me because I was totally clueless back in January um, about what I was doing. Like, I spent all of January, you know, after the new year, kind of figuring out what I wanted to do with my channel and setting it all up. So then when February came around, I was like, here's all this music. (laughs) Here's all this stuff. Uh, and it's been it's been really amazing, like seeing all of the support that I've gotten on Patreon. And while some people are like, I like, because I I expected maybe like I don't know one person like my mom to support <laughs> my Patreon, but uh, seeing like other people that actually feel the need to contribute like even a dollar, I'm like, oh my god, you want to give me a dollar? <laughs> like wow, I love it. Thank you. Um, and so it's, it's been super fun and I've, I've just, I've just rediscovered my love of doing it again. And it's so nice to just have something to do and that's just for me. And, uh, and if other people enjoy it, well, then that's all the better. Uh, but I, and I'm, I'm a happier person because of it. I think it's super fun. And so I'm just glad other people get to enjoy it too, because that's, I I enjoy it, so I hope other people do, and I'm I'm thrilled when people do, and it's amazing. Oh yeah, and, and I'm hoping uh, that our listeners out there will come over to the Patreon, check it out. We have some good tiers, um, including the top tier we have out right now is a guest co-host spot for you know if they, I think I think it's the pledge. I have to go back and look. I don't remember if it was fifty or a hundred dollar pledge. Um, I always but have to do that you, too. I have to double check. <laughs> It, but I know f- that it is a uh, guest co-host spot uh, for a voice actor of your choice based on who we have uh, coming up. So Ooh, I'm going nice over one. to Patreon right now. And 
I know that you've had fun being able to uh, be a co-host on the show for various. It's super, um, it's super fun. Last time I got to be a co-host, uh, we were doing it for the the person that won the 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 uh, the costume contest, and it was super fun because we just talked about cosplay all night. And it was really fun. <laughs> yeah, the hundred dollar reward is the uh, co-host for the full two hours with a voice actor based on uh, who we have booked. A uh, $50 pledge, you'll be invited to join us for a segment. It's about 25 minutes of airtime, either the first or uh, last segment of the show. Um, our sponsors have also ju- jumped in. Uh, a $25 pledge, you'll get a 5 by 7 print from Casey Creations. For a $35 pledge, you'll get a free uh, 5 by 7 original from our sponsor from Casey Creations, and also thanks to Home Circle Media for a $20 pledge. We'll send out a small prize pack Ooh. from Home Circle Media, and items will vary in that, and you could include anything from stationery to minifigures. I, it could be anything. You never know what we're going to get from them. They always give us a prize pack, and I sort it out uh, accordingly. So, and five, a five dollar backer will will get you a mention. We'll uh, thank you live on the air during the show. Uh, of course, if you want to contribute a dollar, we thank you wholeheartedly. Um, like you said, if somebody enjoys it enough to want to donate even a dollar out of their hard-earned money, we graciously um, ap- appreciate it. And you know, it, it's. Like, like you said, it's something that we do out of the love, not so much for the money, but uh, um, you know, sometimes you need some extra funds to help provide better content for you yeah, and being able to get better equipment and be able to have the time to produce the songs how you want to do them for us. It's better yeah. sound equipment, uh, do, uh, you know, be able to do better interviews at conventions, get tables at conventions and things like that. Uh, mm-hmm. And we had a question come in from the chat room from Michael Jensen. And he says, if Megan was to play the lead in an anime that was, that was adapted from her favorite silent film, which silent film would that be? Silent film? Oh my goodness! Um, uh, what? Oh, I I've never seen a silent film. Um, oh goodness. Um, <laughs> I have no idea. I've um, I've never seen a silent film either, so I would be no help. <laughs> see, okay, so since I've never seen a silent film. Uh, I'm going to go with, let's see, adapted from my, I'm going to pick, uh, like, maybe from, I, okay, I don't, I don't have a lot of uh, silent film experience, uh, but I do like to read, uh, so I think uh, I, I'll, I'll say if I, if I could be in something based on something I've read, um, I would say, uh, maybe there's a really great book called The Night Circus, um, and it's a very, very, very subtle um, uh, love story uh, set to the backdrop of like this circus and a lot of magic and magicians and cool stuff. But it's a very subtle love story. It's like it's not like over the top cheesy where you know a guy picking it up will be like, Ugh, gross. Uh, it's a very good book, and I would love love to be to be in that because that book was fabulously well done and beautiful um and i bet it would make a beautiful silent movie as well because it it just is it's the backdrop and the scenery that they put in the book is beautiful so that's my answer <laughs> i've never seen a silent movie never i said i've never seen a silent movie either so i don't know if uh and uh, he says, that's fine, fair enough for the book version. So <laughs> it's probably because you haven't seen a silent movie. Uh, Michael always has interesting questions, and we thank you, Michael, for tuning in uh, multiple times throughout the year for the show, and we're happy that you've been able to enjoy the show as well as all of the other listeners out there, whether you're listening to us through the chat room at blogtalkradio.com, one of the mobile apps, um, yeah, we really thank you so much. Even if you put us on for background noise, I know there are people who go back and listen to the archives um, 
oh, after yeah, the show is live. Probably great to listen to, especially and, if you're like um, working on something. And so I, I thank everybody out there wholeheartedly. The week that we didn't do a show last week, and I had like 15 uh, or what was it, like 17 listens between Saturday and Wednesday of archive shows, and the Danny Chambers show had a spike after Sunday. I was amazed to see that like 14 people went back and listened to the Danny Chambers show. Oh, and I wow. think a lot of that. Um, I think a lot of a lot of that was from Anime Boston, where I talked to a few people, and it was actually at Anime Boston that uh, I received the email from Danny, where she gave us the Chief AID. Um, I don't know if you heard that when we came back from uh, the first break. Uh, mm-hmm. She was gracious. She was gracious enough to send us this. Hello, I'm Chise from the Ancient Magus's Bride. And you're listening to Animazing Radio on the Blog Talk Radio Network. Yes, and, yes, yes. And, and when you get stuff like that, like you, I know you sent us quite a few as well. You sent us, I think, was was four um, IDs. Uh, Morgan Berry sent us, I think, four. We've got three from Todd, um, one from Tatum, one from Brina, two from Bryn. Uh, Michaela has given us one, and I thank all of you so so much for taking time to do a you know what may feel like a quick ten fifteen second recording for you guys like means the world to me because it helps you know i I always laugh because growing up, I was a very shy kid I didn't talk to many people didn't had a very small group of friends that I would hang out with and things like that, so doing a show like this has pushed me out of my comfort zone. Uh, more than I think most people realize. And if I ever go back for like a school, high school reunion or something like that, that almost none of them would believe that I do talk radio. <laughs> well, you do a good job at it. I think you've gotten, you know, over the years, because I feel like, I've, I mean, and we were talking about, I don't know if this was on the show or on break. I can't remember what it was on, but I think you said like, I think I was a guest like, Within that first year of you guys doing the show, if maybe not like after, right after the first year anniversary, and I will say this, I feel like the show has always been great, but you your your skills as just you know interviewing and talking and doing the whole show, I mean they, it's grown so much and you do such a great job. It's just it's gotten better and better and better. So it's it's really awesome. I thank you so much for that because there are times, like, especially, like, every show I get tongue-tied at least once. And, (laughs) you know, we all have personal things that go on in our lives that drive us crazy, and sometimes you you let that interfere with what you're working on. I'm sure there are times when you've gone in the booth, you're having a bad day, and you just, for whatever, even though you've done this character for six, seven episodes, and... You just had that one bad day where it just doesn't feel like you can get it right. And there are some Sundays where I come on the air and I just, I struggle to get through a segment talking by myself or can't think of things to talk about. And it's just a lot of oh's and ums and uh and dead air. And so I know I still have a long way to go because I have no training for this. This is just, you know, making myself do something at first that I was uncomfortable doing, but I had a love for the subject and wanted to give people a way to connect with people who they looked up to and admired, whether it be the artists or the cosplayers or the voice actors or gamers or, you know, I wanted to be able to have a platform where the geek world, as people will call it, had a place to go to learn about some of their favorite things. And it's been four years in the making and I'm hoping it's going to be another 40 down the road. We'll see uh, what time tells. I don't think I could see myself doing this when I'm 80 years old. Uh, <laughs> good God. Uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah, good God, that would be horrible. <laughs> that would be awesome. But, <laughs> you'd be right there. We'd be talking, I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> yeah, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I just had my 40th birthday uh, on Wednesday, and a, 
Speaking of happy birthdays, happy birthday to my birthday twin. Same day and month, different year, but Terry Doty and I share April 4th as a birthday. Oh, yay. So that means, so you can, so here's a fun story about that birthday. I totally uploaded um, the MMO Junkie cover on April 4th, uh, and I didn't realize it was Terry's birthday or yours. And everyone was like, oh, did you put this up for Terry's birthday? And I was like, you know what? We're going to go with yes. <laughs> and Terry got a Terry got a laugh out of it. I got to see her, like, the same day, like, on her birthday. And, and, and she, because uh, she was, she played the my mom in Citrus. And so uh, I told her that, and she, she cracked up. She was like, yeah, yeah, we'll just tell people it was for my birthday. <laughs> she was like, yeah, it makes sense, because you're in the show. And then I just wanted to be super nice and put this up on your birthday. <laughs> and then I just happened to fall in love with it and put it on the show and debut it tonight See, when it you're was, coming on. And It was meant to be. <laughs> and even though Terry wasn't able to join us for the show, because I did put the invite out to her um, because she does have such a busy schedule, um, we've talked a lot about her tonight because with Michaela we were talking about her book, One of Few which we had the honor of reading and had her on the show to promote uh, last year. Oh, yes. I, you know, that's been on my list to read for a while, but I have, I'm really bad. I used to read books like all the time, but now that, you know, adult life is here, it's like, it's so hard to find time to read, but it's, it's like, it's on my list of books that I want to read and check out one day. Cause I always hear good things about it. I, I will be honest. And I'm not much of a reader. There's probably in the last five to ten years, and I'm not going to count audiobooks. I'm going to say actual physical hard copy book in the last ten years. I have only read probably five books cover to cover, and that is mm-hmm. the la- the most recent one that I read cover to cover because it was fascinating. I loved it. It it drew me in to the point of where I enjoyed reading it because I have the problem of I'll start reading a book and I'll fall asleep two pages into what I'm reading and forget. So <laughs> it takes me forever to to read a book. And so I don't read read uh, many books. Um, this out, Terry had approached us about, you know, being able to, to read her story, give an honest review about it on a few different sites. And then, of course, I wanted to have Terry on to promote the book because it was a fantastic book. She did an outstanding job with it. And I don't just say that because we know Terry. I say that because... It it was an amazing book, and even my family is like, "Oh my God, you read a book? I need to read this." <laughs> <laughs> and, you uh, read it; it must have been amazing. <laughs> those kinds of jokes, so, like, yeah, I get I get those jokes too about about other things with my family too. You're like, "Yes, yes, I did the thing." <laughs> <laughs> and I know that we are. Good God, that went by too quick. We've got to go to our. Uh, bomb me our break. Are you able to stick around with us for the last segment, or do you have to get running? I have to get running because my dog is being a nightmare child tonight, <laughs> and I have to take care of him and, and do some other stuff before hitting the hay tonight, so I'll have to run. Okay, well, we, we'll give you uh, a few mo- few moments here for the shameless plugging section where you're able to promote yourself, any shows or conventions coming up. The floor is yours. Well, uh, I just uh, finished up on recording Citrus. If you've been watching Citrus or if you haven't watched Citrus yet, uh, don't be afraid to watch it. I know a lot of people are hesitant to watch it. um, But, I mean, the show is rated mature, so there are some heavy themes in the show. uh, But it's a great show. I had a lot of fun working on it. I played Yuzu, so if you want to check it out, feel free to check it out. I think the dub finale is coming up in the next week or two. Uh, so check that one out. Uh, as for uh, conventions, I know that oh gosh, I don't have my the one time I don't have my planner. My husband is going to go get my planner for me so I can tell you because I do have some conventions coming up in Texas. Um, but while he's doing that, I also have a YouTube channel that we were talking about earlier, and it is uh, if you look at it, I I actually rebranded it. It's just Mop Top now. I took out the numbers to try and make it look more professional and stuff. <laughs> uh, so it's Mop Top. I've been putting out new covers. 
And, uh, you know, you can also find my covers like on iTunes and stuff. So if you like them and you want to take them on the go with you and they're on Spotify too. So if you want to put them on your Spotify playlist, stuff like that. Um, I love it. I also have a Patreon. If you really, really like what I do on YouTube, um, I have a Patreon page where you get like a week of early access. You also get downloads of the songs uh, that I that I cover, as well as like you know wallpapers and other fun little thank you notes and things like that. So there's that. Um, and as for conventions coming up, I am going to be going to let me find it in in May uh, I'm going to uh, a one day con down in San Antonio called Mini Mini Con which they are affili- affiliated with uh, Fan Japan and so they uh, have invited me down for their little one day convention and I'm going to be like singing and, and doing some panels and stuff like that so that will be really fun and exciting um, in June I'm just going to Acon with my dance my cosplay dance group uh, so I'll be at Acon hanging out in Dallas in uh, July, I'm going to a con down in Houston called Delta H Con, and like me and like a ton of other people are going, and it's going to be really, really fun uh, because it's a lot of people that I'm already friends with, um, and so we're going to have a really great time, and I'm sure that will translate into the guests having a great time because the panels will be really fun and exciting, uh, and that's about that's about it. So I have a few cons coming up and I'll, if you want to know more about me, you can and just see me talk on my daily life. I, you can find me over on Twitter, which is at 18 mop top. It still has the numbers in it because I think people just know me by that at this point. Uh, so if you want to see more about what I post and do, I also kind of do streams over on Twitter And I always post on Twitter when I'm going to do a stream. So follow me on Twitter because I'm always on there. I'm literally always on Twitter, it feels like. I'm constantly on it. My husband is, like, nodding his head furiously. He's like, yes, she is always on Twitter. (laughs) So that is a great way to stay up to date with, like, what I'm doing because I'm always on there tweeting. So, yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming on and hanging out with us tonight. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Like I said, we've got to get you to up here to a New England convention so that the four of us, you, your husband, me, and Leanne can all go out to dinner and just chat and have fun. And uh, since we all share the same wedding anniversary, it would be uh, quite interesting stories, I'm sure. I know. I, I, you know, I really want to come up to some of those Northeast cons because uh, I, I always hear like really, really great things. I think, well, where was ZipCon? ZipCon was in I, Ohio. Akron, Ohio. We just went to one in Akron, Ohio, and you know some of the other guests were talking about all the other cons like that are in, up in the Northeast. And I was, and they were like, "Oh, you should go. They're so fun and they're great." And I'm like, "I want to go so bad." So one day, one day, it is my goal to come up to some some Northeast conventions and and have a good time, like everyone says it is. And we've got to go to our bottom of the hour break but when we come back i'm going to be chatting i'm going to open the phone lines to anybody who has been a guest on the show in the past um so they can call in i will uh give that number out when we come back um but once again we want to thank michaela for joining us in the first hour and of course thank you megan for joining us uh, tonight it's always a pleasure having you on the show and uh, we'll be back with more and amazing radio here on the blog talk radio network hello my name is Alba Suzukaze from New Game. It's nice to meet you. And you're listening to Anime Zing Radio. And welcome back to Anime Zing Radio, the Block Talk Radio Network. We want to thank everybody who has tuned in tonight through the chat room with Geek Out with Pebbles and Michael Jensen out in the chat room. Thank you to all of you listening out there through the mobile apps. We can't see you, but I know you're out there listening. And, of course, we want to thank our guests tonight, Michaela Krantz and Megan Shipman, both from Funimation. I have not heard yet from Anthony Bowling. He said he was planning on calling in, but he was also traveling back from a convention, and uh, I have not heard yet from him on whether or not he's able to call in or not so hopefully he's able to join us if not i know uh, we'll get him back on the show at a uh, future time i'm your host doug engler and thank you so much for joining us on this four-year anniversary show Uh, i know that i threw out there for 
uh, open phone lines for any past guest who wishes to call in. If you're out there listening and you've been a guest on the show since we first started back on April 6, 2014, um, give us a call at 516-531-9640. We look forward to uh, chatting with anybody who wants to call in. And I'll actually open this up to anybody who wants to call in if you're out there listening. Um, and you want to talk for a few couple of minutes and join us here in, on our four-year anniversary, we'll, we will do that. Next year, I'm going to have to try to plan something huge and um, you know, see, see about doing a uh, big show or something, maybe do a show on location, or I'll figure something out. I, I also I have so many ideas of things I want to do um, in the future with an amazing radio. Like I said, tonight it has been – so much fun to chat with Michaela and Megan and uh, to hear them interact because uh, they've worked together on shows. But it, it, I think it was a great example of even though they've been in multiple shows um, together, they record separately. So there's not much chance that they might, you know, they probably met in passing. And to hear them just chat and compare notes and stuff was absolutely fascinating to me. I hope all of you out there have it, uh, enjoyed that as much as I did with the, the Megan and Michaela getting to chat basically almost like for the first time, even though they've worked together for a few years and we're in many shows together. Uh, coming up next weekend, uh, next Sunday, we have Harold Sype and Meg Stevenson from Small Monsters Games. They are an independent card game company or an indie card game company uh, that we had a chance to meet at Northeast Comic Con a few months ago and one of the games that they have is called uh, Takeout and it's a little card game of uh, basically Chinese dishes uh, it, almost, it almost looks like the little pamphlet I have for them looks like almost like, almost like a Chinese menu um, and the object is you have to collect uh, one food group or or one uh, food item from seven I think it's seven different types of food. There's hot, there's cold, there's spicy, there's uh, you know different uh, food group food types, and you need to be the first to collect one from each of those. And um, it was a lot of fun. A one a two person game went by really quick. It was probably 15 minutes a time. And I was able to play the game while holding Evie in my arms at the convention. Fortunately, there was enough people walking around where she could just entertain herself while I learned the card game. It was very easy to learn. Um, we're going to find out more about that game and the other card games that they have uh, next week. Coming up at, towards the end of April, we have Jessica Cavanaugh is going to be joining us, another talented voice actress from Funimation. Um, we're looking forward to having her join us. April 29th, we have um, Bryn April coming back as our guest. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to turn the tides on her a little bit. She joined us to co-host for a cosplayer. This time we have Megan Negrelli from Sasso Studios, a young uh, up-and-coming voice actress who does some of the different – she works with Sasso Studios on YouTube as well as an, another uh, group. And uh, so we're going to have Megan joining us in the co-host seat, and she'll get a chance to uh, chat with Bryn. Uh, May 6th, we're going to have Emily Druin joining us from Epolis Comics, and we're going to be talking about KidsCon, which is coming up in June. It's going to be June 10th up in Nashua, New Hampshire. May 13th, we have a tremendous cosplayer. You heard me talk about them a little bit earlier, the uh, Shuzo cosplayer from Anime Boston that I literally chased down because of their cosplay and wanted to get a photo. So Sailor Scone is going to be joining us um, to talk about their cosplay, the, how long they've been doing it, the art, um, and I'm really looking forward to that. May 20th is wide open right now. We are currently working on a, on a, booking a guest there. We have someone tentative, but nothing is official yet, so I'm not going to say anything about that. And May 27th, we're doing a My Hero Academia special. So definitely uh, you'll want to check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, My Hero Academia Season 3 the has 
first episode has premiered already. They premiered the first couple of episodes at Anime Boston last weekend, so if you were in attendance and you were able to check that out, you have a leg up on everybody else. Um, those of us that were hanging out in Artist Alley or in the dealer's room weren't lucky enough to see that, so uh, definitely going to be a lot of fun to talk about uh, My Hero Academia. So it was a, I think that was the main theme. For anime Boston was My Hero Academia. I wouldn't say it was the main cosplay theme, though. Anime Boston, I know I was, so was going to do a review for that. Uh, we had a lot of fun in Anime Boston. It was so good to connect with old friends. Um, Justin Hamburg came by the show. Megan Negrelli, or came by the show, came by the table. Megan Negrelli, of course, um, we roomed with some amazing people. And, uh, you know, we want to thank Cade for being our table helper and uh, runner and sharing the hotel with us, as well as Allison and John, who stayed with us. Of course, it was great to reconnect with our friend Thomas, who came by the table, and uh, Julia Colio. We saw Ash Hare there. Um, so many other people, our friend Taylor, who I mentioned earlier, who has a birthday this month. Um, we got to see her when we were going in for a little bit, uh, and I know there's so many more people that we chatted with. Of course, the vendors on either side of us were wonderful to chat with, terrific artwork. Based on the last few years of going to Anime Boston and checking out the art, Artist Alley, and then last year and this year vending, I have to, my wife and I both were saying this is one of the top years of seeing quality artists at Anime Boston. It was unbelievable. There was, I think every table we walked by and we're like, I could do that. I could buy something from that table, that table, that table. We did buy, I think, a grand total of five pieces of art, and three of them were Darling and the Franks related. And getting asked a question on Facebook about Granite State Comic Fest. Uh, that's a possibility of hit, hitting that. Um, that one's in, and that's a convention in Nashua, New Hampshire. Uh, that, that possibly something to look into. Uh, definitely doable in one day and could be back in time for the show. That's some of the fun of doing the uh, one day of just being able to go on Sundays for a convention due to my daily work schedule. Um, I usually have to ask time off to get uh, be able to go to a convention, but it's looking like now what we thought was going to be you know some some good downtime. We're going to be scoping out uh, potentially a new, a new convention for next year for vending. Uh, yeah. So Granite State Comic Fest on 22nd in Nashua, New Hampshire. So I think that's what we're going to check out. It looks uh, like it could be fun and interesting. So we'll definitely look into that. Uh, as far as convention schedule that we know for sure, June 10th we're going to be up in Nashua, New Hampshire for Kids Con. Uh, so you can come up. That's a Sunday-only show. It's a Comic-Con geared towards kids. And a lot of these comic conventions, you know, you heard us talk a lot about Vermont Comic Con, and there's Plattsburgh Comic Con, Granite State Comic Con, um, Saratoga Springs Comic Con, which is going on this weekend, PAX East was this weekend, so many big conventions going on this time of year. And a lot of them are geared for all ages, but most of the events seem like they're geared more towards teenagers and up. So Emily Druin, and we'll have her on the show in May to talk more about this, but she came up with the idea. She's always been very big about um, putting on a section a section of conventions or events for kids at conventions, and she wanted to have a whole convention geared towards promoting creativity to children. And I, we love the idea. We vended there last year and had a great time, and so we were looking we're looking forward to going back again this year. Um, we're also planning on, in August, doing Vermont Comic Con. We have Plattsburgh Comic Con. I think we looked at the schedule, and we potentially could do a convention every month 
starting in June. Um, because June is KidsCon. July will be at Kineticon on the Sunday as press. August is Plattsburgh Comic Con. September is Vermont Comic Con. November um, is, I think AAC got moved to November, so we're looking at going up there possibly for the Sunday. Um, December, looking like Northeast Comic Con, if Gary does his show in December like he has the few years, past few years. And then in January of next year, there's a show that we potentially could be going. So we could have a convention every month from June to January. Uh, so we kind of like to have our schedule really screwy and uh, really busy, but very doable. All of them are local conventions or within a few hour drive. And for Plattsburgh Comic Con, we're going to be up there for the week to ha to visit with family, and then uh, end the week with the Plattsburgh Comic Con. Uh, Sam Chase does a wonderful job with the conventions that he put on. Uh, originally Chase Con, now Saratoga Springs Comic Con, which was this weekend. I hope all of our friends who are up there, including Jay Moores, Johnny C, um, Vicky Camp from Delicious Chocolates. I uh, hope you all had a wonderful time up at Vermont and, uh, or not Vermont, at Saratoga Springs Comic Con. Too many gang conventions. Holy cow, I'm getting them all confused. <laughs> but good things coming down the road for us. Like I said, we have started a Patreon ourselves. You can find it at Patreon slash Anime Zing Radio. Um, Patreon.com slash Animazing Radio. Uh, follow us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash Animazing Radio. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We have a YouTube channel so you can find bonus content that you won't find here on Blog Talk Radio. You won't hear it on the show. We have exclusive interviews with voice actors, cosplayers, uh, bonus footage from conventions that you don't you won't get here on the air. Uh, you can find over on our YouTube channel. Subscribe to that. We're behind on what we want to put up just because of having a baby recently has taken up a lot of free time that we did have, plus getting ready for Anime Boston took up a lot of time. Uh, we do want to thank our sponsors, Casey Creations and Home Circle Media, for backing us since the beginning. They have stood by us since we first came up with a crazy idea of, hey, let's do this show. What is it called? I don't know yet. Nah, eh, we'll go. I like Animazing Radio. We'll do that. The, this show took six months to prepare before we went live with our first show. And that was was everything from figuring out the name to time to trying to find guests. And we had a team that was working with us. And over the past four years, <coughs> oh, excuse me, a lot of changes have happened. Um, we switched networks. We lost team members, different producers, different booking producers, different co-hosts, you know, so many wonderful guests, so many people who have been a part of the an amazing radio family in history and you know i graciously thank everybody who has been a part of the show everybody who has been a friend of ours um whether you have been a loyal listener from the beginning or tonight's the first night that you've tuned in i wholeheartedly thank you for taking the time to check us out um i hope you enjoyed what you heard tonight we want to provide good content uh quality guests and a lot of fun for you, our listeners, as well as the people who come on the show. Like I said, we if you can find it at an anime or a comic convention, we want to have you as a guest on the show. And, uh, you know, prime example is the last few weeks of the show that we've done. We're going from a uh, talented artist who we met at, North, at, at the time, I think it was, what was it called? Um, it, now it's Northeast Comic Con, but. I can't think of what it was back there, uh, but it was like four, year, four years ago or so, and when we had Karen Gosselin, we had Jay Moore, so a couple of great artists on, to voice actors, to we have a small indie card game company that is coming on next week. Of course, you know, we are so happy to have voice actors and cosplayers and gamers and musicians, you know, Rainbow Bubble having come on and Tune and... Um, yeah, you know, just becoming friends with 
amazing people like Megan and Michaela and Anthony Bowling, who I don't think is going to be able to join us tonight because we are almost out of time and he has not even seen the most recent message that I had sent him. So I'm sure we will get him on the show in the future at some point. And uh, it's, it's always tough. And I know, and I, you know, thank uh, everybody who has been a guest on the show. It's a big commitment to take an hour out of your day or in a co-host seat. A lot of times it's two hours out of a busy day to come and hang out with us and, you know, time is valuable, and I want everybody to know that I really appreciate the time that you all have spent to hang out with us um, because it means a lot to me. Even if I don't get to see everybody, uh, if I don't see you in the chat room or get to interact, you know, it's been a pleasure to have, you know, Michael and uh, Darcy in the chat room chatting, asking questions of the guests, you know, knowing that there are people listening via mobile apps. Um, knowing that a lot of you go back and you'll listen to this show on the archive. It's amazing to me when I go back and look and see, oh, well, you know, I've had 15 listens on a day that there's no show. And it blows my mind that people want to go back and they want to listen to old shows and, you know, go back and listen and see how far we've come. And you'll you'll even see that in the past I, di- I have aired a few of the shows from the old network on on weekends that we didn't do a live show and especially if you go back and listen to that first show we ever did uh with tia ballard as our guest it is amazing to see how far we've come and i thank megan for the compliment of saying that she has seen how far we've come and how much better of a host i've become in the four years because you know i don't i don't always get to see that i don't go back and listen to old shows all the time and to hear a guest who's been on the show multiple times and someone who we've been friends with but can offer on, you know honest criticism and it's not you know in a bad way it's in a way to help you know make you better at what you do and to hear that they have noticed that we have gotten better with the show you know really means a lot and i think uh like i said i thank Megan and Michaela for joining us i thank everybody for tuning in um Next week, like I said, we're going to have Harold Sype and Meg Stevenson from Small Monsters Games joining us. Uh, I am going to cut this off a, mi- a little bit early tonight just because I'm not starting to not feel well and uh, have to use the restroom. So as weird as that sounds, it's um, I wholeheartedly thank everybody who has joined us tonight, everybody who has tuned in. Uh, I... It has been an amazing past four years. I look forward to many, many more years of doing an amazing radio and having wonderful guests. So until next week, I thank everybody for tuning in. This is Animazing Radio on the Blog Talk Radio Network. Have a wonderful night, and we'll see you next week.